All right, so if you remember from uh, one of the first slides, I said the, the first step is the design of the low-pass filter prototype, so that's this guy here. And then to go from the low-pass filter prototype to an actual, an actually like real, realizable filter, there's kind of two steps that I'm lumping together here. So the, the second step that I mentioned, so let me just go over them again. So the first step is the low-pass prototype. The second step is uh, impedance transformations. And then the third step is uh, denormalization. Okay, so kind of here in, in one, uh, one big step, you're seeing both the impedance transformations and the denormalizations uh, occurring here. So uh, in this filter down here, in this uh, circuit down here on the bottom, it's a, a low pass. It's a low pass filter. So you see that our our um, kind of the the topology hasn't changed in terms of you know we didn't add any we didn't add any resonance structures. The capacitors are all in their original locations. Same with the uh, with the inductors. Um, so for the even for a low pass filter design. We start with a low-pass filter prototype. We form, we perform a series of impedance transformations, and then we do our denormalization. So in the end, uh, our source impedance ends up being 50 ohms, source and load impedance, and then our capacitor and inductor values end up being you know, something that's uh, somewhat reasonable, hopefully. So like I said, we we're working off the assumption that the load and source resistances are equal to each other. Uh, we're going to be using 50 ohms. So then the uh, what I'm calling the impedance transformations. You know, technically this isn't an impedance, it's an inductance and capacitance value. But regardless, these are the transformations that I'm referring to. So these are the transformations that are required to convert a low-pass filter into a low-pass filter and uh, to denormalize. So just to show you an example of how it was calculated, uh, let's take this inductor. In QCS, it shows L equals 2. Uh, over here in my formula, I have... It written as L prime. Okay, so that's the uh, normalized inductance value. So we simply multiply it by the source resistance and divide by our center frequency. Here in this case is uh, 10 megahertz. You can see that down here. And when you multiply this through, you get a uh, inductor of uh, that's uh, you know 1.59 microhenries, and that's what you see here. Okay, and then again you do something similar with the capacitor, where C prime is going to be equal to 1. And it is the normalized capacitance in the low-pass filter prototype. So again, uh, this is an example of, of two uh, impedance transformations for inductors and capacitors. When we are converting a low-pass filter, a low-pass normalized filter prototype into a realizable uh, actual like low-pass filter implementation. So just as another example, let's say that we wanted to design a, a third order low pass Chebyshev filter uh, with a half a dB of ripple in the pass band. Uh, so I believe there are two tables in the textbook, a table 14A, which I think is uh, filter coefficients with 3 dB of ripple, which I think is a lot. So we're not going to be using that table. Um, we're going to be primarily using table 1-4B which is uh, Shebyshev filter coefficients with uh, a half a dB of, of ripple. Okay, so we want a third order low pass Shebyshev filter with 0 0.5 dB of ripple. So we go to our table and these are going to be the uh, filter coefficients. So we create our uh, low pass filter prototype using these filter coefficients, the 1.5 shows up here, 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 and here. And then the inductor is this guy here. It's 1.09. You can see that here. And then our uh, load in this example is 1.0. But just note that uh, it depends on uh, whether or not n is even or odd, if that's going to be a, a 1 or a 0. So just pay attention to that. So similar to the last example, to do our transformations uh, and our denormalization, uh, we just chug through these calculations here. They're exact, the exact same uh, calculations that I showed in, in the previous slide. I wanted to point out that the, the table 1-4b of the Shebyshev filter coefficients, um, those coefficients do not have uh, minus 3 dB cutoff at the cutoff frequency. Um, so we designed this low-pass filter using that table. Okay, So this low-pass filter prototype is, is uh, from values from table 1-4. and 
Over here on the left is the frequency response of the, of the filter on the lower right over here. And you can see that at minus 3 dB, um, we're nowhere near the, the 10 megahertz uh, cutoff frequency, which is way up here. So rather than using that table, we're going to be using QCS Studio in order to, uh, to tell us the, the ratios of the filter coefficients. So I'm not going to show you exactly how to do that. Um, I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you guys on the next assignment. Okay, but uh, yeah, just make note of this, okay? So when you use QCS Studio, uh, they have a, a filter synthesis tool. Okay, so you describe the, you know, the order of the filter, your cutoff, uh, the impedance, you know, the amount of ripple that you want, uh, you know, the type of filter. Um, and basically, you, you hit this calculate button, and then the, f the filter uh, structure, the filter circuit uh, gets copied to your clipboard. So you go to the, uh, to the, your, you know, to a schematic, and you just control V into the schematic. And you know, paste the, the the filter into the schematic. It synthesizes the the filter for you, which is great. So in this case, you're able to define uh, different types of. You're able to define the the pass band ripple. So, like I said, um, the table in the book for the Chebyshev filter coefficients. Uh, there's one that has a ripple of 3 dB, and there's one that has a ripple of 0 0.5 dB. Um, but like I said, the uh, the filters that result from using that tab those tables. Um, they move the the cutoff frequency away, or they move the negative 3D point away from uh, where our desired cutoff frequency is. So we're not going to be using those tables for this course. Um, we're going to be using this tool instead. We're going to come up with our low-pass filter prototypes uh, using the filter synthesis tool in QCS Studio. Um, but this gives us the added advantage that we're able to define various uh, passband ripples, which is um, more useful for us, you know, because uh, we might want 1 dB of ripple, for example. So let me say that, um, I probably should have mentioned this before, hopefully you'll read it in the text, but there's kind of a trade-off between uh, ripple and the steepness, um, or the transition region from pass band to stop band. So as the ripple increases, the transition region uh, becomes, you know, a lot steeper, and with kind of less ripple, uh, the transition region is a lot longer. So what, what I'm referring to, the, like this would be the pass, the pass band. Uh, up here would be the stop band. And then I'm referring to this kind of region here as the, as the transition region. Okay, so there's always some trade-off between the, um, the magnitude of the passband ripple and the steepness of our transition region um, or the length of our transition re region. So the filter that's up here on the on the right here, this is the result of uh, using the QCS Studio filter synthesis tool. And then when you run an S-parameter simulation of this, uh, you can see that the minus 3 dB point is uh, right at our, our our 10 mega point or sorry our 10 megahertz uh, cutoff frequency point here which is what we want okay we want to be able to compare uh, you know Butterworth filters to you know Chebyshev filters and, and whatnot so we want them both to have the same uh, minus 3 dB cutoff points um, the Butterworth filters from the book or sorry the, the Butterworth filter tables from the book um, they do have the uh, minus 3 dB cutoff point at the uh, actual cutoff frequency, so that's good. All right, so, so far we've we've looked at how to convert a low-pass filter prototype into an, an actual uh, denormalized uh, low-pass filter. But now let's look at how we convert the low-pass filter prototype into other types of filters, so band-pass, stop-band filters, and high-pass filters. All right, so this is the table that... Uh, explains how to transform a low-pass filter prototype into other types of uh, filters. So let me explain it a little bit here. The equations over here on the left, these are for converting the, the normalized low-pass filter into a denormalized low-pass filter. And you can, see, you can see where that is represented here in this table. Okay, so you see how I have L prime over, over omega C, and over here they have L over omega C. So these are the same they they mean the same thing, okay? They're just using different, uh, you know, different variables. 
So over here, um, g sub k would be the filter coefficient from one of the tables. Um, so these are the you know the 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 value of your l's and c's uh, in your low pass filter prototype. And then to do the impedance transformation, uh, you you divide those values by uh, your cutoff frequency. And then to denormalize, you multiply by your source resistance for an inductor, or you divide by the source resistance for a capacitor. So the denormalization is not shown in this table, but the, the transformations are, are shown in this table. So uh, let's take another one, for example. Let's say we want to convert a low-pass filter to a high-pass filter. Um, you get your filter coefficients from the table for the inductors and capacitors. Then, uh, in order to convert the low-pass filter prototype into a high-pass filter, you you replace the inductors with capacitors and with the capacitors with inductors. And then the value of the capacitance here is going to be 1 over uh, you know, this product here that you see in the denominator. The cutoff frequency times the uh, the the coefficient value that you got from the table. And same thing with the with the uh, inductance value is going to be 1 over the cutoff frequency times the the, uh, the coefficient that you got from the the coefficient table. Okay? For the bandpass filter, again, you start with your low pass filter prototype, you get your you determine your order, you get your filter coefficients from the table. Then, in order to convert the low pass filter prototype into a bandpass filter with a with a uh, specific cutoff frequency and a bandwidth. Um, you convert the inductors into these series inductors uh, and capacitors here. And you convert the capacitors into these uh, resonant uh, parallel components here like this. So the value of the inductor over here in your uh, still normalized uh, bandpass filter is just going to be the coefficient uh, from the table divided by the bandwidth. And then the capacitor value is going to be bandwidth divided by uh, this term here down in the bottom.